been a wonderful home for Worlds. And with so many beautiful locations for feature shoots, OnePlus Cam just took, a, took us behind the scenes for some content shoots here in New York City. Welcome back, everyone. It is time for game two between Gen G and Damwon Kia. And now is the time, I think, personally, that we find out whether this series is going the distance. I think Damwon need to clap back here. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of pressure on them now, especially because they took such a big swing in game number one. And when, when the king individually worked, but you still didn't win the game, it becomes a little bit of a tough question here, right? Do you go back to it? Do you now on on red side actually, you know, still look towards something like Yumi? Are, are Damwon going to be banning it out again? You know, what parts are they really just taking away from that first game? It looks like they've already banned Ooh. red cane, so that is definitely a good... Oh, wait, no, that's Aatrox. Never mind. <laughs> um, oops. Uh, what I want to highlight, and what is something that every team that faces Gen.G is going to have to deal with, especially in best of five, is do you B1 Yumi? Because Genji are not going to ban it. They're, they're going to do it. They've well, got to, right? Okay, yeah, but that's going to be... Oh. No, that's got... I I feel like they still pick oh, it. Because this... Gen G will still pick no, it. No, they're, they're just going to go Lucian Nami again. But yeah. they're going to do Lucian Nami into MF Yumi again that they just got clapped by. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that that's a head-scratcher to me. Like, I, Does I Roller like... want to play it again, though, is the question. Because there are a lot of things that work with Yumi. You but, can play a whole... Yeah. Like, I mean, Twitch Yumi is something that they've decimated people with. What about Jin? Yeah, Jin. Oh no! <laughs> I got paid. It took, it's so it took a hard second there. for it oh. to register. I mean, there, there's lots it's of options, hurts. but I just can't see a world yeah. that it's not MF Yumi. They, they were up 30 CS and pressuring them. Yes, there was some, you know, roams and jungle interference. They're also going to be able to get the stage one so they can go triple melee top side, uh, do MF plus Yumi bot side, and I think you're set up really, really well. Of course, as you say, you know, you can even go if you want to play heavily towards the other side. You can go Ezreal Yumi. Like, there's lots of other options, but. I just, it's like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It works so well in game one. Yeah, I, I do want to give some credit to Damon because I think that, again, playing against Gen G, even on blue side, feels very, very rough. Yeah. Because banning the Yumi on blue side feels like a wasted ban, which I think it is. But against this team specifically, it just feels like there aren't any good answers. Um, and overall, uh, we will have a Showmaker going over to the Azir here. Yep, uh, Choby oh. hasn't defected, by yeah, the way. Yeah, that's a little yeah, bit. I just, got, I just got really confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too, very, very for strange. a second. Um, that is once again going to be MF Yumi. So it's the same bottom lane matchup between the two teams. Um, Showmaker this time around, though, is heading towards a champion that does a fair bit more work as far as early game pressure in that Azir. So, fans to come through now. As, yep, there we go. Finally, Showmaker, okay. Doc Dom, and Kellen yep. come back to the right yeah, side just, of the rift. I, I was like, wait, have I been looking at the Hold wrong side the whole draft? Yeah, I got me as well. But um, we're no, good. I mean, th this makes this makes complete sense to me, right? Just go right back towards the MFU meet. Works so incredibly well. Showmaker is going to be on the Azir. I do think to be running back the Lucianami, and I will say the Aphelios was a tip-off that they wanted to go for it, but maybe they were hoping that Genji was going to ban Yumi, but there's no reason that they would. No, they never um, would. So to me now, the, the pivot has to be that Domwon has to get a pick for Canyon where he can affect bot lane. Because clearly the 2v2 is going very poorly, I think, for Doc Dom and Kellen. There we go. <laughs> the Kane ban to come in. OK. I, I think it makes complete sense. We don't know yet where the Sejuani is going to go. It has mostly been going towards the jungle, combined yeah. with a double melee top and mid lane. But I do think that overall, there is still some flex potential there. And especially to pick up a mid laner here on R4 into what will be uh, Showmaker's Azir, then you don't give anything away. Genji keeps their flex potential. And overall, it's feeling like a tough draft to recover from, I think, from Dom one. I mean, I feel like you could just go a Kali. Like, I, I think yeah. you could go a yeah. Kali. 100%. I think, you know, I don't know if Chovy has, has a Yone in his bag of tricks, but that that is... <laughs> oh, that is don't the, you worry. <laughs> Actually, you that's way better. About that Get, one. Pick it up. That yeah. is, like, great th suggestion. That, to me, is also a really strong answer into Azir and does pair well with the Sejuani. Oh! Um, so instead, Instead, if they're going Camille, so they're going to grab Doran's pick here. Very interesting. Atlas, what if it's mid Sejuani? This is Chobi we're talking oh, about. Oh, God. Little no, AP no, pick. No, 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 he'll play <laughs> The Scara special from, what, eight yeah. years ago yeah, or something? Yeah, exactly. yeah, Love it. I'm looking to see what Damon actually rounds out a composition with, because I agree with you, Azale. In isolation, the bot lane matchup was horrible. I still love this Gragas pick. I think that Gragas yep. into a map remains good. And into Camille, fantastic as well. As well actually yeah. able to cancel the Hextech ultimatum. So overall, I like this round out. But the Canyon pick for me is going to be the big one.
Yeah, this is so interesting. I, I wonder if he's just gonna go towards like a Lee Sin or some sort of just ganking jungler where he can, you know, put pressure Lee, on. Yeah. I'm, I'm not really sure, you know, what the thought process is here. He has to go towards an AD jungler. You know, Viego's banned out. Graves is obviously banned out. Uh, the Kane has been taken away. You could look to something I was talking about last game, something like a Kindred or even an Olaf. Hecarim can work. Uh, Wukong is, is a bit of a throwback. We haven't been seeing much Wukong at all. Yeah. Uh, but this is very heavy dive here now. It's gonna be on the monkey and then the fat man in the top lane to really be stopping these MF alts. Yeah, a lot of knockups available, but this is certainly a blast from the past. Let's see what Gen.G do to round out their composition as we're looking for Chovy's pick, potentially, unless he's playing Camille mid, but we've seen that do not so well. Yeah, we don't know yet. Wondering uh, what the final round is going to be, or there is still so many weird different directions. Oh, yes, Azale! Thank, Thank you very it. much. You know what's the beauty of this? It is Lehen's solo AP on the Yumi. <laughs> and a lot of people might be saying, oh, there's no magic damage. Believe me, there is way too much magic damage. Well, and especially since the Yumi changes, most players are doing Q-Max Lumens, yeah. right? So it's, yeah. it's not atypical anymore. And I want to highlight, in case that you're not a follower of the LCK, um, Chovy's Yone is part of one of the most legendary games that he's ever played domestically, which was a game where he, I don't even remember what his KDA was, but it was like he was free Samurais on the Rift all at once. Um, and the amount of Chovy chants that were heard that game and the, the, the Chovy yell yeah. was immeasurable. And especially combined with the Sejuani, like this top side from Chen Chi is disgusting. I mean, I, I feel like it's it's a monster, monster gap here in the draft oh, yeah. here for, for Gen G. I, I do think when you're looking over at the other side, there's incredible playmaking, um, but there's gonna be so much pressure put on, especially by this top side quadrant here from Gen G. The triple melee top side with Sejuani, you know, is gonna be incredibly threatening. So we're gonna have to see, you know, how well Dom Wan can really withstand the onslaught that is gonna be there. Because once Yone gets a couple levels, you have that spirit unleashed, spirit unbound, whatever it's called, the E. You know, you can go for it and really take these aggressive trades onto Azir, and Azir doesn't really have a lot of recourse. You kind of just have to disengage every single time. Yeah, and uh, if you've been watching any Champions Q, Trovi has been playing a whole bunch of games uh, on the Yone as well. Um, but I do want to have a look into the jungle here because, of course, the Sejuani for Peanut is what he decimated T1 with in the final. This is a whole lot of comfort for Genji across the board to be perfectly honest. Even going back to yesterday's matches, we saw both Wei and Owner having incredible games with the Sejuani, especially compared oh, yeah. or combined with very, very strong lanes. Mm -hmm. And overall, this Wukong to me really feels like a Hill Mary, whereas the Kane was a very strong, and I, I really liked it, counterpick in a specific situation. This Wukong kind of feels like we need something AD. Kindred yeah. doesn't feel that good. So like overall, where are you gonna go? Especially with the Graves being banned out every single time. and. This is the best that Dominic can do on blue side. You got to be a little bit worried. I mean, to me, it feels like there's not really a lot of ganking Minions options here besides maybe top lane. Like that's, yeah. that's the only place you really have much gank assist whatsoever. Uh, but Doran is, is not disrespecting, and it's not as though he's playing, you know, the Ignite TP Camille. He is playing Flash, and he's going to be able to have the answer as long as he's not hookshotting aggressively. And honestly, you have a winning bot lane and a winning mid lane, so there's no reason for Doran to do anything aggressive. He should just chill and farm up on the top side and wait for it. Wait for the victory screen, basically. Yeah. yeah, or just wait for Peanut to turn yeah, up because yeah. that gank then combo is absolutely fantastic. Yes. So we'll see what is going to happen here as Trovi char charging up the queue as Yone is doing. Joy heads on forward. And this is an opportunity, like in the very early game, for Showmaker to get some pressure as the double up here. A lot of fighting. Genji and Damwon here. We're probably not going to see too much action in the early stages, although that was a lot of damage. That's a painful one, and I agree with you, Azale. Uh, the way that this bot lane went last time around was, I think, the biggest issue for Dominic and the reason why they went so ham. Because yeah. obviously you want to you want to scrap, you want to skirmish with the draft that they had, but at times it felt like they kind of went over the top. And you're gonna be in a very similar position this time. I do want to highlight though that Lahens is going for the Guardian Yumi here, so a lot more defensive power. Yeah, absolutely. And perhaps the read on the Dom one side from their bot lane is, hey. It wasn't the matchup, we just misplayed. We, yeah, right? we made a mistake. And, and if yeah. they feel that they really made a mistake, maybe they can run it back and really showcase it to us here. Quite like it. There's, uh, yeah, Chovy and Showmaker laning up against one another. A little bit of a battle towards the top side, but just a casual biffo between the uh, Metal Legs Lady and the Fat Guy. Having a look here towards Chovy, oh. down to about 50%, but might be baiting Great. Showmaker in. 
Oh, this would be very, very dangerous. I think Showmaker knows there's the Flash Arctic Assault, though, and the Winter's Wrath is going to be able to get that permafrost. Showmaker, first blood, the unbound soul gets Chovy back to the minion wave. It's beautiful there. Chovy hits three. As soon as he hits three, Peanut has already arrived at a full topside clear. And with that E available, the soul unbound just gets in. And Peanut with that Q flash interrupting the dash back there from Showmaker gave it everything they needed. Really cleanly executed. Kenyon immediately trying to go for a counterplay, but uh, Chovy. Yeah, Chovy's there. Yeah, he's gonna and be able to get first turn. Gonna be able to Come get on. out, but not gonna get anything on the punish, because that might have been an angle to at least do a little bit in terms of getting gold back. Still gonna set up here for the blue buff. Yeah, and I think it's his because uh, we see no smite on Peanut. He has smite, but we'll see if the bot lane is going to roam. You know, they are locked in there. Uh, Kellen was threatening the roam up, so Kenyon will at least take away the blue buff, but of course, much greater spoils on the side of Gen G. You know, getting this counter matchup here for Chovy, getting the first blood. Early Vamp Scepter is going to be very problematic here, and it's just a beautiful gank from Peanut. Q, Flash, interrupts the dash. So now, even though the Flash is gonna be committed here from Showmaker, you just can't create enough space because the the stun the, from the passive proc there is gonna stack up immediately. Even though he dodges the knockup from Chovy, it's still the amount of autos that you can get out with yeah. the Yone combined with the Sejuani, um, which is one of the reasons why we have seen Sejuani do so well as a jungler. There's so many strong melee mid and top laners at the moment in the current meta, and Sejuani enables her, uh, them like no other. Absolutely. And for this Azir versus Yone matchup, so much of it for Azir is about bullying in the early levels before the Yone yeah. can really get a foothold in lane. But the fact that you get a, an almost instant Vamp Scepter now means you're going to be able to shrug off so much of the poke. And every time Soul Unbound is available here for Chovy, he can go forward, he can take this trade, and it starts getting worse and worse and worse for Showmaker on the Azir because you have no sustain as the Azir. You go through your potions, and then every time you're taking one of these trades, he's going to heal back up there afterwards with that Bam Scepter, and you're going to be threatening that all in. Super One Special on the bubble, but the Make It Rain comes through as well. The counter damage is fantastic as the Flash comes through from Doc Dom. Ruler just standing his ground, does have to use the heal, but that is it. And this is the power as, oh, it does get tagged, but there's no burst available of Yumi. This is why this pick is so highly coveted. If you can win all ins like that, what do you do? Absolutely. Oh. It's incredibly difficult. And to me, that, that just shows the mastery of this bottom lane that Ruler and Lehens have. They understood that, yes, they are at lower health, oh. but Dokdom has spent all his spells there. There was no more damage remaining. Canyon. So it. cheeky. Canyon's going to cancel the back, but still being very, very patient. And Dokdom's gone home. Lehens is going to face check. They're going to see whether they can burst him down the bubble. It's just beautiful, and the cat is denied. That is the first kill, Damon Kia on the board. And that's pivotal because without that, Gen G just have another free card to snowball that bot lane, deny any opportunity from Damon Kia. And Wukong, even though he has been nerfed repeatedly, do want to reiterate that if you are an F and you're only tool that you have to stay away from is Flash, it will be very, very hard for you to reliably create distance between you and Wukong to pick that for what feels like the better part of this entire year yeah. was a top tier backline dive pick. I mean, it's a great kill for Canyon, but at the same time, it's not really going to help to equalize this 2v2 very much. You know, Duck Dom wasn't there. The kill went onto the Wukong. No summoners were spent on the Gen G side. So they're still going to be feeling strong in this 2v2. And Doran, anytime that passive is up on the Camille, you want to take these short, chippy trades. But the sustain on the side. Oh, oh Noguri. Yeah, Noguri going for it here towards the top side. Doran wanting to answer back. Precision protocol available available, but doesn't want to uh, fight against this Gragas, who's looking very aggressive. Oh, do note, no help coming here for Doran, and we do see that Canyon is making his way up. Doesn't have ultimate quite yet at the very least. Not really going to be able to pick up a plate, but what this does open up with Doran being stuck on his turret is the opportunity for Canyon to try and find a lead in the jungle 1v1. But look at Potley, Peanut down here. You know, they know he's not up on the red buff, so they may suspect something. Yeah. Uh, there is cleanse available for Doc Dom. We're looking to be able to walk out of the Aqua Prison. Still, Peanut, patient as well. It's exactly what Canyon was, but no, gonna go in. Not gonna find the Arctic Assault as Kellen decides to continue walking back towards his turret. That's gonna save his life. 
Nice. Now Ruler wanting to get that cannon and does manage to do so. Canyon gonna get a lot more on the top side though. The scuttle spawns top. He takes away the red buff. He takes away the scuttle here. Uh, you can see trying to get some vision, you know, into the enemy jungle there. They want to keep Nogari safe in this matchup to be able to have push, to be able to chip away at Doran. You know, that is one of the lanes that we talked about him being able to attack. So they really want to make sure Nogari is feeling safe to do so. And overall, even with the early vamps up that Chovy was able to pick up, we do see that in the early levels, Showmaker is able to generate a lot of pressure regardless. And I want to go back to this bot lane, because even with how much attention there has been, in terms of early game, it does feel a little bit like the read from Duggan and Kellen, at least for now, was correct in that mm -hmm. we didn't see everything that happened in the early laning phase. I know that as early as level 3, 4, they were already getting heavily shoved in by the Yumi and the MF, never really able to recuperate at any point. And at the very least, this time around, you're able to mitigate. Is it enough against the Yumi? I'm going to say, not really. But at the very least, we do see that there is a little bit more pressure here on the bot side of the map. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it is looking a lot better for them. It is a gold advantage here for Dom1. You know, they're up 8 CS in the bot lane. Not massive, but at the very least, you know, they're not down 20, 30, uh, as they had ended up in that last game. And we do know the power of, of the MF double up, right? And sometimes all it takes in these lanes for a lane to go bad is you get that pass through Q on a minion, you get the kill, you get that bonus damage yeah. on that Q, and you lose a couple hundred health, and all of a sudden you can't threaten it all in. Uh, and things can become very, very difficult. Yeah, and then you get stuck in a bad back cycle, yep. and then you're going to be behind on tempo, and, and, and it kind of snowballs from that, especially against Ruler and Lahens that throughout the entirety of summer have been the most punishing bot lane that we've had within the LCK by a very large margin. Well, right now, it's going to be a 6 CS advantage for Dovdum. Should extend a little bit as our Ruler and Lahens coming back from a back. Nogari tanking up turret shot here, feeling very happy on the Gragas, and honestly, if it's a top lane island, that is the happiest Nogger you're gonna get. Because he just would prefer it to remain a 1v1, as he's always extended as far as he can go. And I just love how, how much he's harassing him on these range minions, trying to just chip away at him, trying to deny as many CS as he can. You know, at the end of the day, the sustain that is on the Camille is much lower than that of the Gragas. So you want to constantly take these trades. But we can see both junglers hovering down here around this bottom side. Rift Herald at the ready for Canyon, so he can put a few plates into Dokdom if he would like to. Helen just shadowing over the side. Canyon thinking Ooh. about whether he wants to go for a dive or whether they just want to grab the plates and secure this one. Prowling Projectile comes through. Vision not available here as Ruler. Slightly aggressive, but does manage to land that double up. That is a lot on to Dokdom. And I wonder whether the read from uh, Domlin is, as Canyon is spending so much time in this bot lane here, that they expected Peanut to be here immediately. Peanut now has gone through a back, now making his way back over, and is ready here to defend the turret. Yeah, Rift Herald to come down. Peanut's going to turn up. There is the Glacial Prison. Kellen getting taken down very, very low, but does have the heal, and is able to keep himself alive. There is the charge from Shelly as Gen.G just back themselves away. They do manage to get the cleanse and the heal. And in the end, much ado about nothing. Neither of these teams want to take the risk. And I think from Dom1, just getting the charge in is quite nice. Able to get a, a even though it's a shared gold, give over gold towards that bot side of the map. As unsurprisingly, Chovy with the kill, uh, currently leading in terms of gold on the map. Yeah, and it's, it's about a 600 gold event for Doc Dom there. They're looking yeah. here for Chovy. Yeah, Chovy's gonna get thrown back as Empress Divine is flashed by Chovy there. He's gonna get the knock up as well. Permafrost is gonna come through, but Canyon flashes out of the way. Oh. Now Peanut wanting to get the flash with the Winter's Wrath, but Canyon's not gonna be going down here. And again, another scuffle, but no kills as Doran wants to change this one. Nogari was not the target he was looking for, but he's going to accept it at least for now. And Chovy gets his second. Chovy's cancel there on that CC chain. Beautifully done. Nogari tries to use the defensive ultimate from the Gragas. Very strong against the Camille, but he doesn't get the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Just locked down. And then even when he gets the ulti out there, Chovy just uses the solo inbound to immune it on the snapback. Yeah. Really, really well played here. Genji coming out on top in that skirmish and taking plates back here in that mid lane. Oh, going to cancel Canyon's back here. As that is the decoy version. Nogari's here. Does have flash, but no cask. Denies at least that plate. So Damonkia back on the map and still in the lead. As they do have some CS advantages 
across the board. And we again see this instinct from Dalmon, I think very justifi uh, justifiably so, to try and look for plays, try and look, find anything aggressive as Lahans. Yeah, Tidal Wave comes through, but there's the final chapter as well. The calling is going to come in. All oh, our buttons are just being pressed here on the bottom side as Peanut will turn up. Does he have one available? He absolutely does. And there it is. It's going to go wide as now Kellen is forced Canyon. to flash. Bullet time, ruler. He still had his ult even now. Canyon's going to turn up. Warrior tricks to get him forward. Gets the flash out of the MF. That is important, but Genji get another kill. Yeah, they get another kill there. It is all four of the bot lane sums used from Genji, but they take down Kellen. Had a great sidestep on the ulti there, but just couldn't create enough space, and they are threatening forward here, wanting to see if they can push Ruler off this farm, but aren't going to be able to do it. And we again see Gen G. So many of these baits, they know Domon want to go in, they know Domon want to look for plays, because in the later stage of the game, in this one, Unless you immediately blow up Brutal, like between the Yone, the Camille, yeah. the Yumi, it is so incredibly hard to find any opening for Gen G. Read the play, respond carefully, and overall, Dalmon is just unable to crucially snowball the lead that they have right now. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's oh. going to be so difficult to actually deal with Chobi later on in the game. When you have a Yumi strapped on and he goes into the back line, that is going to be so frightening. Uh, there are some X factors that we can talk about, but a great sidestep here from Lehens uses the heal, sidestep to the side of that that and then Dr. Dom is able to get a good calling down onto Ruler to chunk him down and that's really what kicks off the fight. But then the follow-up is again Peanut is early to the play. Uh, even though he doesn't hit his ultimate, doesn't end up mattering, forces the sums, and Ruler follows up. And then crucially, Canyon doesn't actually have his ultimate here. If he does have it available, possibly they can burst down Ruler, maybe yeah. get a knock up on Peanut and snowball from there. But isn't the case. And I'm glad that you highlighted the One again. Uh, Chovy doesn't even have an item yet. And it's only going to be downhill from here. The moment that a two item spike is hit, I think for Dom one, I, I don't see how you're going to be able to actually get big wins unless Genji usually overstep. Well, Canyon going to avoid the Arctic Assault there. It's like ships in the night, the junglers pass each other. I will say some of the X factors, the fact that there, you know, it is going to be Moonstone very likely here on Lehen, so there's yeah. going to be almost no magic damage here. So an armor stacking Gragas can be somewhat problematic. True. That can be pretty strong. You do have the ability to disengage and have fairly good lockdown. Azir as well, you know, really does have some strong scaling. I agree. I favor the Genji draft, you know, as it gets later in the game, because I think it's going to be tricky to deal with. But that being said, I do think Dom want to have some options and have some playmaking of their own. There is still so much engage power, and as we pointed yeah. out, the backline dive that's available uh, available for Dom as well is still very strong. And to me, one of those X factors is also Showmaker on the Azir here, gone for the crown build, so very strong into the relatively short range, barring the bot side as long as he can stay away from Ruler and Lahan should get a lot of value out of that. But it is going to mean that the damage from Dom Kia in these fights might not be enough because I want to highlight again, as you pointed out, it's Moonstone. It's an early Mountain Drake as well for Gen G, and thus far, one of the recurring themes in this game, to, or in this series rather to me, has been Dommon tries to kill Gen G and barely doesn't. And then they lose the fight, and then they lose the objective. And I think if you are a Dommon fan, you're hoping that the difference, you know, between last game and this game is the fact that Dokkom is in a much better spot, right? Absolutely. You know, he was very behind at this point in the game last time around. Dora in here in a bit yeah. of a bother. Might have a bit of a fight as Showmaker holds onto the ultimate for now. The Cyclone comes in, is now Peanut getting taken down extraordinarily low. Doran, he's just gonna get taken off the board. Peanut kept alive by the Kitty Cat, but it does mean that Dom Wan Kia are able to lock down Shirley. Really nicely done here from Dom Wan. You know, Canyon, at first I was wondering, is he being a little bit too greedy going on to Peanut there instead of just securing the kill on Doran? But it turns out they have the exact right read. They kill off Doran and they push out Peanut, forcing his flash as well, plus they get the Rift Herald. So an opportunity for a pretty big play here. Nuggery will have to play this safe though. And I think a big problem there was that Doran showed a little bit too early, maybe not quite in uh, in line with the rest of his team, because I think they were in a position to contest, but with Doran getting picked up and Peanut basically being forced to go in aggressively, uh, not quite the circumstances of that they were looking for. And now Domon Kia get the mid lane turret and get a second charge as well, setting them up for a much better mid game, I think, and a lot more controlled than was the case last time around. Yeah, we can just see it one more time. Canyon and Peanut scrapping it up. Uh, Doran gets spotted here, you know, as, as he comes out onto Nogari, yeah. and looking for that fight. And Nogari's like, sure, let's take it. Showmaker is a lot closer, and all of a sudden, it's just full on retreat here for Gen G. And as I said, Canyon is just waiting on a Peanut, pushing him out, and the ulti is there. In comes Dokdom and Kellen. They have first move from mid lane. There's just not really much of an opportunity for Gen G to contest.
Yep, not a lot of options. Fantastic work there from Darmon Kia to allow themselves to have even more momentum on this map. Now moving it towards that 2,000 gold lead that during this World Championship has been a pretty important break point True. to get to. Oh, yeah. Pretty large win rate for that kind of a deficit or advantage. And it has been, I believe, 95%, or at least going into yesterday, it was a 95% it was, win yeah. rate yeah. if you were ahead at 2,000 gold at any point in the game through groups and play-ins, which was uh, pretty astronomical. Yep, T1 Game 2 may have changed that stat just a little bit. Mm -hmm. However, still going to be very, very high. So, Darmon Kia, not out of the woods just yet, but certainly doing much better this time is, as I say that, Showmaker can have his crown broken. And not care. Yeah. Yeah, he is. And everything. He's happy. Uh, the, the crown is an item that I think even though it's easy for both Ruler and Lahans to proc, in terms of sideline, I think helps out Showmaker so much playing into something like the Yone uh, with the trading pattern that he has. And overall, this is where I think the, the, it's the scariest for Gen.G is maybe they get into yeah. Dr. Dr. Dom just relentlessly escapes. It's absolutely fine. Peanut still had a pretty good angle there. Yeah, this it does, does force the Gale Force. So going to be happy about that. You know, gets the Gale Force down. And Showmaker, anytime he has that crown up, you know, really can absorb the engage from, from Chovy. Yeah. But the issue is, of course, it's a 40 second cooldown and it's a very low cooldown, you know, at this point in the game, uh, you know, on Chovy's Soul Unbound, it's only 13 seconds. Uh, so he can go in constantly. You, know, you poke that off once and then you basically have to play safe for a full wave yeah. before you can really step up again. Once again, Canyon getting a little bit excited. Showmaker clearing out the wave where he can. Reset is going to be picked up here, though. So probably not going to have too much action. And overall, we see Domon doing the same thing they did in the first game, which is move around as a death squad. Look for people mispositioning. Look for someone who maybe isn't in the right place at the right time. Try and catch Genji in the rotation towards the lane. Chovy says, that's fine. I don't care. I'm not going to rotate. I'm just going to teleport towards topside to pick up a juicy wave. And um, it does want to go for the turret here. We do see Dumb One move towards topside, but I don't think Chovy is really in any danger. And with the Drake coming up in 45 seconds, Dumb One's got to start stacking those because it's an LCK game, so we get, after what was a Infernal Rift in the previous game, finally Atlas, your favorite dragon. The Revenge of the Cloud Soul, hoping <laughs> that we've got two picked up by Gen.G and then three picked up by Dom One Kia so I can maximize the amount of clouds. Hextech, way too much of that it's so true. far this world. It's got a lot of catching up to do. This is a great start. Yeah, well, uh, unfortunately, it, it feels like for, for Dom One, it's, it's not really the best soul in this one. Um, you know, you're gonna, get some, you. you're gonna get some value. I apologize. We'll work. You were you were the one that was on my side of sale. I, I mean, oh. move speed is highly valuable, but a lot of times when you're looking for the extra power, you know, it, it is gonna no, be really I, good on Wukong, agree. right? Um, we'll try to when, save I, it when I see champions like <laughs> Renekton, when I see champions like Olaf, when I see champions like that, that's when you're actually pretty darn excited to think about getting that Cloud Soul. But um, you know, move speed always valuable. It's, it's just not going to be one that I think Genji's that concerned about. So if Genji has the read that we win, we win 5v5, you know, later on, if we have yeah, to wait for two or three items, change. they're just going to be chilling, waiting it out. Yeah, and I agree. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Atlas. I try to... Try it's to a, it's okay. It's um, <laughs> no, I, I agree. The, the only one that I think have really a relatively high value would be Doc Dom and Canyon. But compare that to the roll attack power that you'd get from, um, I think, the Infernal Rift in particular, uh, we saw uh, didn't even get close to getting picked up last time around. Or even Mountain Soul, right? Like, if, you're, if, you're, if you get something like a Mountain Soul against, against Yone, oh, yeah. as well as uh, as this Camille, as they're just pushing very heavily. They really yeah. want to force a response because genji has been playing heavily towards sides. We can see Doran, again, up in that top lane, you know, just pushing out top lane, looking for that tier two. So you need to now move towards Dragon or get something done here to really respond and, and force a response from your, your opponents. Well, now it's coming through. As you can see, Darmon Kia slink off into the Fog of War, looking to clear out some vision here Look where they can. But the Camille is absolutely fine. Chovy on the bottom side of the map. Could go for a dragon if he would like to, but instead there is a juicy turret. He wants the money. He'll pick that one up. And Darmon it's, Kia once again on the push. Yeah, it's just starting to feel like uh, Darmon don't really have an answer, right? And and they're not actually being able to effectively respond to these side lanes. They don't have winning side lanes. They're oh, Lahans! Yeah, Lahans gets caught out. Those side lane issues do kind of go away. So Darmon now just going to start off this Baron immediately from over the wall. Showmaker going to be able to do that. Doran, can he allow Peanut to have the space to get in? As Showmaker off towards the side. Noggery over the wall. He needs to get Peanut out of the pit. This could just be the 50-50. There's a phenomenal bubble. He 50 gets in. Oh, Peanut steals it away. He's not going to escape, but they'll say thanks for the leash. And Genji 
secure, Baron. And it's an absolute disaster for Don Munkia after a really big pickup on the Yumi. Chovy doesn't have TP. He's not even. <laughs> well, Chovy doesn't have TP, so they rush towards Baron. And if they get that, you're in a great position, but instead, they don't get Baron, they don't get Drake. What do you do? It's the backbreaker there from Gen G. It started to feel like Tomo just didn't have an answer to the side lanes. There was these heavily pushing side lanes from the Yone and the Camille just dominating that shove. And it felt like Tom Water just grouped up looking for a 5v5 that was never going to happen. So they get one pick and they say, all right, we've got the one pick. It's time to go towards Barrett. And while Dom One decides to try to look and turn and fight, this is actually a brilliant ulti from Ruler that forces the 50-50. Ruler comes in, just drops the ulti, and now it doesn't matter that you're not hitting the Baron. The MF ulti is enough. 939 there, I think that was an auto plus the smite coming through, is enough to secure it. And that's just a beautiful play between Peanut and Ruler. Because you can see that the entirety of Dom One knows this as well and drop aggro. As Peanut's like, <laughs> that's a happy Peanut. He's like, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, like, it's just like, sorry guys. Yeah, thank you for from saving the death me. Chamber. Perfect. <laughs> and score as well. Score certainly had a few times in that Baron pit that oh. we prefer not to mention. As there's a shutdown onto Canyon. Chovy picks that one up. That's his third of the game. And that is Genji now with a gold lead. It is all going wrong. And when you look at oh. the items, it even gets worse. Final chapter is invested in as well here. As that's a phenomenal bubble, but not going to be followed up upon. As Damon Kia now backing away. Ruler, a lot of damage to this turret now as he has those two items put together. Peanut, Arctic Assault, but not great with a very well-placed Blast Cone. Well, not well-placed, but well-used. Will be able to get himself out. This turret, not long for the world though, and Gen G just starting to stack up this Red Bull Baron power play. Almost 3k now. Hextech ultimatum towards the bottom side. Kask is going to be used to try and get him out of there. Is now Doran still oh. underneath this turret. Chovy does lock down the kills. Now Doran's just gonna walk it out. Hookshot gonna be enough. And Doc Dom, he cannot overextend. The rest of the cavalry has arrived. Flash forward for Canyon, but the Cyclone is splashed out of the way. A phenomenal knockup comes in, and Ruler's going to lock down the kill. The turret not long for the world, as the MF does so much damage. Peanut nails the ult onto Kellen. It does not stop, gentlemen, and it's a double kill here for Ruler. And that might just be game again. Don Monkey at Conga line in, and Genji says, thank you very much. We have Yumi, we have Blood First, the shield, but we have all the sustain that we could possibly be looking for. And at least Dom and Kia hold on to their base, but overall, it's just a disaster for them. I mean, Gen G's team play has oh. just been incredible. The way they have peeled apart Dom One in this game, despite the better early game, you know, from the Dom One bot lane, despite a lot of things going well for them in the early stages. Chofi and Doran have just been such massive threats in the side lane. But they make this one look easy. This is not even a particularly well-coordinated dive here, let's be honest. And Nogari is very, very tanky, but there's nowhere for him to go. And the response is just slightly too slow from Doctom. And then uh, next up, Kenyon tries to maybe get Ruler, but with a flash available, immediate flash, Exhaust comes down. Canyon just gets taken down as well. And if Showmaker's there to get Ruler after the flash, then maybe. But I also want to highlight, Showmaker in this game has gone for a very uh, split push slash sideline oriented build, has gone for the Nashers 2, which in a 1v1 feels great, but in these type of team fight scenarios, gonna get a lot less value out of that. And here we see Chen Ji taking over complete control of the game. And if that Baron had gone the other way, we might be looking at yeah. a completely different game. And I mean, I think uh, Showmaker here, you know, with Conqueror, with the Nashers, is hoping he can really punch through those frontliners, but it's, it's so tough with all the threat on him in That's this so 5v5. Time. Yeah, exactly. You don't really have the time to get enough autos out because there's so many members diving into that back line. There's the MF ulti threat as well. And Gen G just feel like they are unleashed on the map. There is nowhere safe to go for Dombon now. Uh, they just have to huddle up in their base and hope that they can find some sort of an opening for a great engage. Yeah, exactly right. You had a look at the gold lead there, very reminiscent of the last game's gold grab, right? Like, there was that time for Dom Wan Kia, but the ruler ending that we talk about in Korea is definitely something that happens around the 25-minute mark in their more recent games. It used to be later than that. Now it is uh, coming up much earlier. 23 seconds on this Cloud Drake, as I think Genji might be able to just lock down the soul point yeah. and then push this one forward. And yeah, these numbers, like this is exactly the two champion, the two players on this Genji roster that you never want getting money.
Absolutely. And Yone is is a very big spike at two, but this is not a champion that falls off later on in the oh, game. Oh, no. This champion scales to infinity. So yeah. uh, it is so concerning how strong Chove, uh, Chove is in this game. And you can see Doran already threatening that flank. Was spotted by Showmaker, so maybe there's some sort of an opportunity to look for a pick play. But I think Domlin don't have any confidence to walk in towards the Dragon, so they're just going to try to get mid lane prio, maybe get some vision out around Baron, and hope they can maybe catch Gen G moving up to try to check into them. Yeah, and Peanut, he can face check. He's so extraordinarily tanky, so Canyon not going to be able to start anything, but Darmok uh... here do have them by the short hairs a little as they push up. They should be able to okay. take this inhibitor turret. All, All right, right. Get bounty they set up claimed. this sun disc. Exactly right. Did bounty gold is going to come through. Teleport to come forward as Peanut over to the side. He can Arctic Assault. But he's going to do that more defensively here as Darmok Kia looking for an inhibitor. Sort of turning the play on Gen.G here for a moment. And what a wonderful move here by Dom Wonkia. Get themselves an inhibitor effectively for free. Still need to actually get the exit, but it looks like they will oh. be able to. And Drive even by though... Baron. Why? I mean, even They're gonna though... They're going to bait. They're yeah. going to bait. Oh, my God. Are they... Yeah, there's a blue trinket available for mm -hmm. Ruler, though. Genji just sort of caught off tempo here a little bit. Damon Kia do try to attack the Sejuani, though, and that is definitely the target that can survive that. Peanut is going to face check once again as Canyon, not wanting to ulti or anything like that. Oh, Still not um... the target that they want to go into. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, Peanut was just sort of auto-attacking while he was walking away, and Canyon took more damage than the Sejuani. As, yes, there's a large minion wave now breaking the bottom side of their base. Side lanes have been given up on here by Damwon Kia. They did get an inhibitor though. I, I mean, I think it's 100% the correct choice, right? You know, people are gonna make fun of you for not playing sides, but they cannot match sides here at all. They've gotta find a 5v5. They're gonna get outscaled. You gotta look for it now. Yeah, well, there's the Glacial Prison. It's gonna slow them up as Unbound Soul pulls Chovy back. A lot of buttons have been pressed on both sides, but Gen.G gonna be happy about this. And here you see the core issue that Domon is running into. It's that Peanut, especially with the Yumi on top of his back, is immovable. On the flank. Yeah. 100% in, he goes, oh my goodness, Dokdom flashing himself out. Doran may have overextended here as Canyon's clone. He's going to get smacked down. Great stopwatch to be used, but it's not enough here for the Camille. Doran goes down and now Dokdom trying to free it. He gets the ultimate, but he pulls himself back out again once again with the soul unbound. Once again, Dokdom going to get engaged on, but the answer is going to be there. Taken down very low, and Ruler is at full health, ladies and gentlemen. This is a huge problem for Don Juan Kyo now moving back. They managed to get the pick off onto the Camille, but it's not quite enough, and Chovy is splitting once again. Chovy's healing up. He, he can look for a threaten here. He should have the soul unbound back, and Don Juan still have got to escape here. Yep, he's now looking oh! for the Blasco. Gets himself out of the way. All right, Canyon now trying to escape, but it's the Yumi that locks him down of all people. Showmaker standing his ground, moving forward. A lot of damage here. Oh, oh, Ruler. How the heck does he do it? It's what? Not turn it around. Showmaker turns around the fight, diving in, finishes off Ruler. When How it did it even like had it all. Because in these longer fights, that's where the sustain comes in. That's where the Yumi is most powerful. That's where you see Chovy be able to sustain off of a single wave. But they make one misstep and Domo at the very least keep himself in the game. Overall game state, I think, still very rough for them. But the fact that they keep themselves alive here, absolutely insane. It was massive and I've got... Oh my god again. All right, well, now we're going to look for Nogari, Wait. who is uh, now in the pen. Doesn't necessarily want to be there. Chovy exits. And now Tidal Wave going to be used, Blast Cone was available, so Kellen looks a little bit silly, but if he had have tried to walk his way out instead of using that, it would have been a good move. And we can see, you know, Nogri is definitely a tanky boy, and, and Doran just a, a little bit disjointed. I mean, look at Chovy on the side. He's prepping his Q on the Wolves. There have been a few engages here from, from Gen.G that did look a little bit kind of not really coordinated. And on this one, they got punished massively. Chovy is still not there. Even in the 4v5, it's still close as Chovy finds a massive all turnaround. And at this point, it looks like a disaster for Dom Kia, right? Because they go in immediately, really nicely done, exhaust on Duck Dom so he doesn't burst down Ruler. We see that in addition to that, Peanut using his flash to keep the Lucian down. You see these health bars, you see Chovy sustaining, you're like, what can they do? Yeah. Like, like, how are they gonna get out here? But look at this blast cone. The timing on the blast cone from Showmaker was oh, that's beautiful. Run. That's Man. one board back to live as it's looking for an engager from Peanut. Nagari is gonna have to back it up. 
Yep, not going to be able to find the Glacial Prison there as Peanut has thrown a few of them around, but honestly, it's non-committal CC. Doesn't need to worry about it too much because this inhibitor still dead for another 50 seconds, but that should be coming back up pretty soon for Gen G as Ruler taking a lot of damage. Oh. Gonna have to be careful as the ulti comes through from Chovy. Bullet time comes in as well. Not as high value as it could have otherwise been as Chovy gets himself out. His soul rebound once again. As Damwon Kia should be out of deny the soul here. Yeah, it's gonna be their dragon. Gen G are not able to find the engage there. It only connects on Canyon. The MF ulti not very effective, and they're trying to mark the Baron as well, making sure that Gen G are not rushing it. They still have bounties, right? They're still getting gold. Damwon have been making these plays while behind in gold, and overall, we see, even with Gen G getting leads in terms of itemization, some of the engage is not quite working out, and maybe Gen G getting a little bit nervous, yeah. because once you make a second, third play, and they don't work out, the momentum swing can be absolutely huge. And we have to remember, despite the fact that Gen G was so dominant this year, you know, it hasn't always been smooth sailing for these players in their careers. You know, Chovy has, has yet to actually advance past the quarterfinals. Hina has been a part of many incredible, incredible teams that haven't quite lived up to the expectations, oh, yeah. and you know, yeah. this is something that can really weigh on your minds in these moments. If something starts to go a little bit wrong, you, know, you can really feel the pressure in these situations. So many of these players only very recently claimed their first domestic title. Chovy, Ruler, he's, he became a world champion and then for years wasn't able to domestically secure it. I know, it's absolutely it's insane. Absurd. Yeah. And so, Genji, let's see whether they can hold on to this one. And to your point, Azale, like, it's... Genji versus Damwon Kia. Mm -hmm. Genji gapped the entire LCK, but it was always very close against Damwon. Even when Nogari wasn't there, even in spring, it still went the distance. Even with Hoya and Birdle, two yeah, players right. that had a lot more faults. Nogari, especially once he really got more comfortable within the team, um, has been very, very successful. Do love this. Goes back to what you were saying earlier, Zale. Draw open the map, avoid these 5v5s, e and use your 1v1 and your side laning power. I mean, they're just not even playing sides at all, right? Like, they've completely given up on side lanes. They're going to group five. You know, now, as, as soon as Doran shows bot, they have got to pull back and respond, or they've got to flip Baron, right? So you've got to make your choices. And they decide they're at least going to push out sides again. And then I think it's just right back, rinse and repeat. They push out the sides. They're going to group five. They're going to try to deny vision, look for picks here. That is the game plan. And for Gen G, it's about establishing enough vision that you know that they can't actually get a major objective and then slowing down the game so you can draw them apart and really deny that 5v5 death ball that it feels like Domino is looking for. Yep, Doran doing a great job here towards the bottom side, making sure that Nogari has to try and answer him in the 1v1. This is the part of the point of the game that Genji are very strong, like you were talking about. Canyon facing down Peanut once again, who is extraordinarily tanky, finds the point blank ult, but it's just the clone. Canyon gets himself out. He's absolutely fine with the Warrior Trickster availability. Peanut can probably just rinse and repeat on that particular play, buying space for his team. But overall, Dr. goes forward. We do see that Domon, even though there is still a slight gold for Genji, it's basically become irrelevant. It's all about execution here. So we're getting deeper and deeper into the game, and Genji just doesn't seem to be able, even with the power that they have, to crucially crack open Damwon Kia. Yeah, crazy thing as well is Doc Dom has an item lead over Ruler right now. He's sitting on four, Ruler wanting to go for that reset so he can retain parity in the items. Will be able to go back and now has that Infinity Edge complete, has the Rapid Fire done as well. Still with that broken stopwatch, wants that GA for the final one, but now at least is on the same page outside of his clock being broken. And I think really what Genji is waiting for is all of the GAs to come through. They already have one on Chovy, they're building one on Doran. The last item is going to be a GA as well on Ruler, especially when you get it on your divers. When you have double GA for Doran and Chovy, they can throw themselves into that back line with reckless abandon and really create space for Ruler to run over the fight. And I think that is the spike that these guys are waiting for. There's also no immediate clock on Genji. Like, yeah. they have a very oh, strong rush scaling bot. comp. Oh, they're gonna try and force response from Damwon here. All right, well, let's just try and kill the base. I guess they've got so much damage on these structures. Damwon here should be able to move their way over, though. And Chovy, he's going to walk it out. Was a little bit later than the rest of his team. Made us a little bit anxious, but okay. it's gonna be okay. So what right. happens? They got a turret. Hey, they got an inhibitor turret. That's huge, Chronicle. Well, I don't know what Is it? About. Is it Atlas? Absolutely. We, we really went from um, one of the most chaotic games I've seen to 
16 kills at 37 minutes. Remember, just the way we like it. I'm pretty sure Damon Kia had the longest game in the LCK this year. <laughs> he did. Um, I think it was against Fred at Brion. It a was. A team that did not necessarily um, perform the best. And uh, Genji or Genji, they go without saying when it comes to long games. So uh, now Genji gonna pull off the Baron. It's going to oh. be discovered. The rest of Genji still in the area. Playing with vision here a little bit, but once again, how they gonna happen? And Doran did finish his GA, so this is that spike that I was talking about where I think Genji now will feel more confident to, to take some risks on the map. You can see again, it's back to the side lanes. You know, I, I'm kind of becoming a bit of a broken record, but Don Juan have no options to answer it, so now they're just gonna say, all right, it's time to flip Baron. Flip it again! Yeah, yep, you have to force the flip. Choby just gonna try and walk his way over, but realizes that's not gonna get him there soon enough. Glacial Prism with the fade away does a fair bit of work here for Peanut, but they're not wanting to commit to it just yet. This pincer maneuver from Genji could be terrifying. Canyon still trying to keep himself safe and they have the phalanx built up Doran spots out Nogri there with his sweeper available and they've held on to the Baron now it's Gen G in the pit can Showmaker make it happen as Chovy gets in gets immediately out again now Peanut Doran. trying to protect his carries Doran hook shotting Nogri goes in there's the body slam Showmaker oh, oh, the three man Empress Divide the shutdown to come through as well immediately Noctum's gonna die and now it's Chovy's turn but is it going to be enough is the question. Doran flashes the double knockup. Oh no, it's not enough. GH. And now Canyon coming through. Doran still has his. And that is going to be, I believe, the ace now completed for Gen G. Teleporting towards bots. Oh my goodness. No, Shoemaker is still alive. Sorry, Nogri is still alive. And Chovy not going to be able to spot him, so they can't end. Back towards it, gentlemen. It's just a calm LCK versus LCK. Oh. Oh. <laughs> they may not be able to end, but they can get Soul here. Doran is heading there, so is Chovy. It was the GAs that made the difference in that one. They had the double GA. Chovy's able to come back alive. Nogri knows that he's going to be back up, so he can't actually continue the fight. Showmaker very nearly took over the game there, so close to being able to turn that one around, but Dokdom was killed off on the other side. The Lucian could not survive the fight. And you also see that even though Gen.G have multiple extremely strong late game damage threats, for Domwon, it's much harder. Yeah, let's have a look at it again. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the Yumi ultimate was used very, very early, and then Doran, again, a little bit disjointed. A great Q from, from Pina actually slowed this down, but then the flash in from Showmaker connects on four, but look at Chovy on the other side gets into the back line, deletes oh. the Lucian, and that's really what saved the fight. Because with Lucian still up, you can win this fight, and you can end the game as Domo Kia as we're fighting yet again. Yeah, that's Cyclone down now for Canyon. Not entirely sure how that all happened as we're trying to catch up with ourselves here, but I, I believe no flashes were necessary. It's Chovy, Soul's unbound, he's gonna be fine. I don't know why no I was stress. getting excited, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah never mind. Calm down, Just Atlas, classic, please. Classic Yone thing. Cool. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> you're good. But Chovy, full build. Oh, oh, look at the damage, the God. battle between these two mid laners, Showmaker and Chovy, trying to be the X Factors here. Showmaker still has room to grow, you know, still has that last slot where he could get towards a death cap, but Chovy is full build. Yeah, and he's also like 90 CS down, mm -hmm. is Showmaker. This guy has been playing on the back foot all game, but Azir in the late game. Definitely, and Showmaker Playmaker, of course, as Kobe dubbed earlier on in the tournament, this guy has been clutch when it counts. And that's why we were so disappointed in game one, right? But this time, showing up. Oh, and on the other end, for, we already highlighted how important the GAs were. Doran still has his, but look at Damon Kia. We see that Canyon building towards one as well. Yeah. Dr. Dom currently Lucian's sitting on one. And with everything that has happened, uh, it, it yeah, Baron's still, still alive. Like, well, <laughs> Baron's alive. We might even get a opportunity as a oh my, oh my god. Man. Yeah, that's this, revolting. Yeah, that's uh that's oh, a uh, very strong Who unit. Cares? Yeah, we'll just take the leash, I guess, says Damon Kia. Peanut says, oh, god. I'm here, I'm the jungler. By the way, please stop. They and Damon say no. Now Chovy gets the knockup on Anogri who body slams to get himself out. Chovy now has to get back. Dom thinks it's his angle to get on in, but the 
GA that he recently purchased. He's just going to get smacked down. Now Canyon trying to turn it, but Chovy just hits him. And that is going to be the play. The top side has been taken down. Now Doran trying to dive forward. He's still got the GA. Empress Divide defensive, but not enough as Ruler just says goodbye to Showmaker. And Gen G will claim the ace, the triple kill for the MF. And this should be game two. And it might have been so close for so long, but in the end, it is a clean ace for Gen G. An overstep from Dalmokia trying to find an angle. They need to take risks in this later stage of the game, and oh it doesn't work God. out. The damage from Showmaker not going to be enough here as Genji will break open the base. Their composition, fantax fantastic. And now a celebratory MF vault as the bullet time flies through. The Nexus will go down now. Match point for Genji. What a battle, though, between these two teams here. That man on your screen right there, Showmaker, certainly going to be feeling it at this point in time, but he played so well, especially the later stages. He absolutely did, and, and Tom Wan, you know, really seemed to turn it up once the pressure was on. You know, they were able to really force Genji's hand in a lot of situations that made this game, I think, a lot closer than it felt like it had any right to be, because yeah. this one felt like Genji was going to run away with it. And to me, that has been the story of this tournament for Damwon. It has been, we get very close. Remember the game against JDG? We get leads, but then actually following through is something that they've had a difficulty with the entire year. Obviously, the 10 gold lead that they had in the spring, game five, yeah. is the best example of this. But even with Nogari back, and even with how close they get, in the end, it's not quite enough. And in the next game, we need to see a complete pivot from Damwon. I think that, especially given the performance, them sticking with the Lucianami was defendable. But at this point, you got to throw a Hail Mary because Gen G is just not folding. I think that cat on a book might be removed from the game. But Gen G yeah. take number two and bring us to match point. For more on how they got it done, we're heading over to the State Farm Analyst Desk. And we're taking a break. So we're going to need it. Thank you so much, Atlas. Uh, but I'm not sure how I feel about you stealing our analysis uh, with the whole ban the cat on the book thing, because that feels like uh, what should be the approach here for Dom Juan. <laughs> now letting it through two times it in a row. I will admit, I will admit, You're such an artist, this please. was a much closer it's game. Dom Juan had many opportunities, I think, within this one, even with the, the, the fact that they decided to leave the Yumi up yeah. once again. What, what do we make of that, Kedril? Two games in a row now. Mm, yeah, but bot lane was a lot more stable this time around. True. Dogtam actually had a pretty decent lead coming out of the lane phase, and despite Ruler getting all of those kills, I think it was 3-0 at one point, Doctime was ahead in items. He was still waiting to finish the IE Ruler. That's when Damwon was really capitalizing on the three-item Lucian spike, but it just wasn't enough. Chovy on this Yone just picked up so many kills in the early stages that this champ just scales so infinitely well that he was just dominating the fight. Showmaker just some incredible plays to try to bring it back, but Damwon, huge mistake on the Baron. And then you get to see the power of a Yumi on an Assassin champion, right? When you slap the Yumi on top of the Yone, yep. that's when it becomes God Comp. The thing uh, I liked most about the Gen G draft was the fact that they decided to go for a Yone last pick. Because one of the scary things about Yone is that while he does have a very difficult early laning phase, which is where we kind of saw Gen G falling short, the reality is that they will always have that scaling late game option. And I think that what we've been continuously seeing from Dom One are these small fumbles in the mid game, where regardless of the early game advantages that they can get, there's always a window with which Genji are able to come back. And I thought that we consistently saw Chovy just playing these fights beautifully. And it's even better in this case because against the Azir, you don't even have a bad lane phase. It was actually a pretty common counter pick to Azir in North America. CLG using it a whole bunch really successfully, having kill threat on the Azir, um, you know, for the early lane phase as well. So this this game extended quite a bit. Uh, we're actually going to jump over the early game and get into some of the mid game and the and the team fights that ended up breaking uh, down. But before we get to that, of course, we got to talk about how every second counts. And thanks to the reliable Cisco network, Peanut comes up big for the team in a clutch Baron flip situation, getting the smite. It was, it was Damwon who had the early game advantage, and this is where I felt like we were getting to see some of what I think makes Damwon so good. And then they decided to flip the Baron. You can understand why they go for this, the idea behind trying to use Baron to force a fight, but I do not think that they were prepared to handle the onslaught that was coming through. The MF ultimate combined with the smite steal from Pina was just beautiful, and the execution was flawless as well. It was such mayhem in that pit. You can see the idea from Damwon. Send Nuguri over the wall, Nagraga, send Showmaker over push the, the, the Sejuani as far back as possible yeah. so they can finish, but Dokdam has to dash out of the pit because of the MF ult, otherwise he's going to die. And then it's just literally two junglers and a support in a pit. 
that's the most high pressure situation I feel like you can have in League of Legends. Two junglers in a pit, extraneous damage all over the place, and you can see when, when the pressure is on, these are two of the best junglers in the entire world. But yep. Canyon with the early Q on the Wukong there couldn't combo with his net or and, and this is where we start to talk a little bit more about the effort that Showmaker put up. This is a very extended replay, so stick with us. Some intelligent macro moves by DK to kind of wrestle control, and it'll end with some real heroics out of the mid laner for Dom1. Well, I think what's great here was how Dom1 recognized the teleports were unavailable for Genji, so they couldn't leverage their split pushing power. So by trying to force them into this 5v5, there was a window where they saw an opportunity. And this was a great one. They convert this into an overextension from Doran, who tries to force something, when it looked like that Dom1 were in a more favorable position. And we continue to see these incredibly close team fights throughout the game. Yeah, and the problem that Dom1 have is Genji's comp relies on getting on top of you. Camille, Sejuani, Yone. Three melee top sides really just want to jump in. The Yumi can kind of play with the divers or play with the MF on the peel. And Damwon need to peel as much as possible. But sometimes Showmaker, I think, in situations like this, realizes there's no more peel left. There's no flash ult on Canyon. There's no flash ult on Nuguri. He is the peel. And at times like that, he just decides to go in and push them into his team so they can actually gap close and get some damage down on things like the Lucian. Burst them out, get them low enough so that they can be the ones chasing on oh. the Genji. It's two incredible plays but his health bar was so low when he commits to this That's and he just thing. about wins it it's just such a miracle play here by showmaker just keep them alive in a game to make the decision with that much health uh, is one uh, astronomical to begin with number two if this fight happens anywhere else on the map it's probably game winning it's just the fact that it happens so close to their own base yep. it's just game saving at that point and not game ending the amount of heroics that showmaker pulled out in this game and they still don't lose is to don't is, win. It's mind-boggling. Yeah, yeah. They, this is going to... I feel like that's one of those games that breaks you. We saw it yesterday with T1 RNG, where RNG is so close to winning a game two, they throw it all away, and then the game three is just such a stomp because you're just so mentally out of it. You're like, yeah. wow, we're actually have to reverse sweep them now yeah. despite getting such a good lead. We are eerily following the trend of some of the series we've already seen, but but Vettius, it did not end there. As no. I mentioned, it took us going back to the Baron pit yeah, to really have sword. things decided. <laughs> Please move the speaking sword. So that's uh, <laughs> that so I just wanted to keep track of Chovy in this fight. The really the, the two solo laners came up massive because you can see Doran on the flank and Chovy on the flank as well. And this is really the best case scenario for Gen G to really find a fight. Canyon gets incredibly low in the team fight and they're kind of forced up into this choke point on the top side. And then Gen G are waiting for their opportunity to strike. Nogari is doing a good job of keeping Doran under control. And then Gen G see a window to start this because of how low Canyon is on the top side. But then watch what Chovy is doing. He's trying to force the initial fight. And, uh, to separate uh, or split up Darmon rather, and then just watch what he does on the backline here. The ultimate comes through, Darmon gets split up. Showmaker with an incredible engage makes it look like the team fight is won, but the rest of the team is so far away oh. that Darmon can't really follow up on this. You can see that Ruler does get taken out of the fight, but look at Chovy here on the backline eviscerates the bot lane. One versus two, and the second that he removes that obstacle, and the fact that Showmaker committed his life to making that play, the two soul laners are then able to clean up the end of that fight. These fights are just so fantastic to watch. Just skill expression across the board. Nuggery there actually finishing off Ruler and finishing off Lehens, who wasn't even on Chovy during that fight. You know, if Chovy had a Yumi on top of him, that would have been even more of a disaster. It doesn't actually stop Nuggery from getting the base, uh, the TP off to, to defend the base. And while I would probably label that as the game breaker, Kobe. It wasn't quite the game ender. Damwon <laughs> would require Gen G to come away with one more team fight win again, right around this barren pit and the top side of the map to bring it to a 2-0 series score. Oh my God, they keep coming back to the Baron for these flips and this one right there, you see it. Doran immediately onto dock them and they take down this Lucian. They pop that GA so early on. They did get such a big health lead in this team fight. They do and this is just where Gen G kind of runs them over. There's nothing really left. Damwon just have to try to run, peel, cut the losses, but the chase and the gap close from these champs is too strong. Showmaker again trying to push them back to peel for his Lucian so that they can get some damage in, but it's just not enough. I feel like when I look at Damwon now going into game three, I want to see a couple of changes. I want to see Nuguri on a carry. I'm tired of seeing this Dragas. He's really good on things like the Aatrox, the Camille, the Fiora. If he can get something that actually has carry potential in his hands, instead of relying so much on Showmaker and Doctem to carry all of this weight, they can play triple threat comps. And I think we can all agree, as we said at the beginning of the day, Mid lane is such a broken role, man. Like, it's unplayable. <laughs> like, what are you supposed to do? Showmaker and yeah. Trovia just having, like, an incredible series so far. Yeah. This mid lane role needs to be nerfed. Yeah, that, so I'm, I, glad, I'm glad we did that segment. Yeah, yeah. top of the day where everybody exactly. yeah. Featured everyone agrees. Yeah. 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 Everyone agrees. Yeah. Yeah. The mid lane role. Yeah, true. Sure, it is our featured <laughs> matchup. Oh, uh, you see here, blue sign for Dom Juan. Backs against the wall. They got to run three in a row, back to back to back. Cajal, you've given us some ideas, but mm -hmm. as well, I still in the back of my head, 
the idea that they're leaving the Yumi up, and that means they've got to trade a ban out, you know? So, like, which ban do you start dropping it's, in this scenario? It gets really difficult when you drop that second game. It's so frustrating when you watch Damwon's regular season and you look at these drafts. This isn't really their bread and butter. Kenyon's Wukong was maybe something that you can highlight, but this champ's kind of fallen out of the meta already. They just needed a team fighter in that case. Lucian Nami is knit for Doknam Kellen. I think Varus, something along those lines, supportive engage uh, on the bot lane. Carry top for Nuggery is more of their kind of play style at this World Championship. I think they blind picked Camille. And Nuguri is going Gragas into it. It's great. He gets to push. You know, he's a front line and he yeah. can peel and all that stuff. But he needs more playmaking ability in terms of being able to deal the damage in the fights. If things are looking good for Gen G. You want to hold that sign up, Kobe, as I throw to commercial break? Ah, uh, I feel so bad because they're they're already so sad. You know, don't, I don't feel sad. <laughs> don't, don't feel bad because I know that the reverse they sweep is bad. Oh, they wait, sleep in it. Usually you let them flip. Do you want to flip oh, yeah, your prediction? No, 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 no. no, no, no. Listen, 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 this is going to be the Lord Esports events that preceded unfortunate things. They're going to say they're going to win. We're going to reverse sweep. A reminder that the LCS and LEC have joined forces once again to bring you the Diphoria podcast for Worlds. Catch up on quarterfinals preview with Atlas, Kobe, Azale, and Dracos. And stay tuned for the semifinals episode dropping next week, available on Spotify. Series points coming up. Don't go anywhere. Uh, Omega off towards the side, Nuggery over the wall. He needs to get Peanut out of the pit. This could just be the 50-50. There's a phenomenal bubble, he 50 -50. gets in. Oh, Peanut steals it away! He's not going to escape, but they'll say thanks for the leash and Genji secure Baron. Jungle, I, 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 how is I no one scared of Peanut? Yeah. How, how are you not scared of okay, Peanut? Put the sword down. down. Put, put the sword, the sword down, down, man. Peanut. Put the sword down. I will defend the Peanut's down. honor. Behind 21 epic days of epicness. Behind 1 billion hours of drop jewels. Behind every match, every broadcast, every moment at League of Legends World Championship 2022 is the network capable of making it all happen. The Cisco Network, a.k.a. The Realm. Cisco, powering the future of esports. A new and very serious game, Jake, from State Farm. But these in-game purchases are wrecking my wallet. I can't keep sparkling, Jake. I need a sparkle. State Farm has options like combining home and auto, so you get a rate that fits your budget. Very nice. The gameplay is really strategic, I swear. For surprising great rates to fit any budget, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Red Bull gives you wings.